Hi, my name is David Kreitlow and I'm the Director of Management Training at Gilardi Group. And today we have our quarterly video newsletter and I'd like to welcome you to it. And we have guest speakers of uh, Luana Winkles, Mary Lardisabel, and Bijan Hendafar who will be talking with us. And right now I've got Luana to my left and I'd like to uh, turn it over to you, Luana, for a moment. Thank you, David. I wanted to remind everyone about food quality. I wanted to remind everyone that the operations manual has been updated to lesser holding times on our products and no holding times on our pre-made burgers. And I know as I visited restaurants, I still find people overholding. Very important that we're serving a hot quality product, so please make sure you review your operations manual and the holding times on all of our product. French fries, five minutes. Chili and chili cheese dogs, 10 minutes. Corn dogs, 10 minutes only, and absolutely no pre-make of chili and chili cheeseburgers. Back to you, David. All right, very good. Thanks, Luana. And let's now go to Mary Lardisabo, and she's going to be talking about some money-saving tips. Off to you, Mary. Thanks, David. Okay, I have another money-saving tip for you. This is the bottle of degreaser that you guys get in your store. Most of you use it. It's $20.35 for a case of degreaser, or about $10.17 for a gallon, okay? What I want to try and get you to do is to dilute the degreaser down. It actually calls for it on the label. If you look in the operations manual, it's one to two ounces per gallon of water, okay? So what I'm suggesting is maybe not the one to two ounces, but I'm suggesting maybe six to eight ounces of, of degreaser per every gallon that you have. Obviously, you're gonna to have to have some spare gallons around. Um, the average store uses about two cases of degreaser a month, which is about $40.70. If you only had to do it every three or four months buying a case, you're going to save about $122 every three months or so. So again, dilute your degreaser down and you'll save yourself some more money each month. Back to you, David. Thanks, Mary Lou. We really appreciate those uh, money-saving tidbits. Uh, let's go back to Luana for another topic. And Luana. Thank you. I'd like to remind everyone about the new law with credit card sales. You've gotten a letter from me about this, and also you should be receiving a letter from your provider, whether that's first data or you use another provider. Beginning in January 2012, you will receive a 1099 for all of your credit card sales for the year of 2011. Really important that you make sure your credit card provider has your correct tax identification number as well as your exact name as it shows in the IRS database. If you do not have that information correct, beginning January 2012, they may withhold up to 35% of your credit card transactions for taxes. So please watch your mail for the information that came from operations as well as the information that came from your credit card provider and make sure you follow up. If you have questions, please make sure to call your provider or call your franchise area director. David? Wow, very, very important information. All right, next let's go over to Bajan Hindafar, and he's gonna talk with us about uh, giving back to the community. Bajan, off to you. Hello, everybody. I'm here today to talk to you about local store marketing, more so about community partnership and really what community partnership means for us. As you guys are going out, and uh, we've talked a lot about local store marketing lately to try to increase sales and, and build our brand awareness, but uh, one thing you can really focus on that does not take a lot of effort is community partnership, and that's just find, finding a food bank or uh, some charitable place that you can team up with to do a fundraiser for them. Uh, I did one this weekend in Beaumont and Banning, and I just wanted to share a little bit about that with you. The owners actually partner up with a group called Carol's Kitchen. They've been in the area for 10 years, and what their mission is is they are there to uh, feed the hungry daily through their kitchen, but also pass out food to churches, shelters, just anywhere there's a need for food, that's what their mission is. Once they made that partnership with Carol's Kitchen, Carol's Kitchen provided us with about 30 volunteers that had hot rods that uh, were going to come out and bring the, their, their cars down there and in return the restaurant was going to provide them with breakfast. It was about $80 to the owner operator and breakfast, uh, not that much money. The other thing is they brought a DJ that played 50s and 60s music the whole time for the five hours, uh, which was great. I mean, the, uh, the DJ was very loud and he was talking about Wiener Schnitzel and our 50th birthday and uh, the support for Carol's Kitchen and the community. So really the word went out in the parking lot and it's a big parking lot with a lot of big retail um, outlets in there. So it, it was great. The attention that it grabbed was just huge. They also printed up flyers, banners that uh, they distributed. 
They also ran a press release in the newspaper for us. Um, so uh, it was just great. They also um, they had about a thousand friends on Facebook that went out, hey, join us at Wiener Schnitzel uh, to support Carol's Kitchen. So you guys can't pay for this stuff. This is just great publicity. Uh, really came at no charge to the operator, just time and energy. Um, so I really recommend you guys do that. So let me just take you through real quick. The car show happened, people started rolling in. The, owners, the owner operators were out there um, just greeting people and talking to them about their business and how they're teaming up with Carol's Kitchen. Uh, a lot, a lot of people came up and it was just, it was great. Uh, we had a couple $500 hours. I think one of the greatest things that happened uh, and I had not really witnessed before is the clientele there I would say is 80% uh, retirees. Um, once they realized that we had Tasty Freeze, which they were not aware, the response was, oh my gosh, as a kid, I love Tasty Freeze. I didn't know you had it. We, I'm sorry I don't have the numbers, but we sold so much ice cream, uh, I couldn't tell you. Tasty Freeze was going the whole day. So really the recognition from the day, not only did we do a great thing for, um, to help a, a charitable donation, but people now are gonna tie Wiener Schnitzel in to the community knowing that we are there to help and we are there to give back. And we're not only there to try to grab your money and grab your sales, uh, but we are deeper and we can do more. So um, that's really about what happened. I wanted to let you know that we have tons of resources out there. You have your franchise area directors that would love to help you get started. Um, GGI Learn has uh, LSM tools. We have a book that we created that we showed at NOS that is out there to help you. Um, so guys, really, it, it's time to get out there and help our community. There's still so many people in need, so many families going hungry. Um, there are so many great ways. So just start there, start wherever we're here to help. That's my story. Back to you, David. Thanks, Bajan. That was great news about the, uh, the event that you did. Good to hear it. Something I'd like to talk to you about is the new law. It's the California Food Handler um, Card Law, SB 602. It becomes effective on July 1st of this year that every employee within your restaurant has to have a food handler card. There should be a letter coming out to you uh, by the time you're watching this video. It's going to cover the details and everything about it, so just be watching for it and um, move forward with it, uh, getting them as, uh, as soon as possible. Luana, I know, has another topic to talk about, and so Luana, let's talk about Mojo. Absolutely. Just wanted to remind everyone about Mojo and how exciting it is to create some excitement and fun in your restaurants. Motivation, opportunity, journey, and absolute ownership. You can take ownership of your restaurant and make sure that each day that we uh, utilize the tips that you've heard about here on the newsletter and uh, make sure that you're motivating your employees to treat your guests right and make sure that it's a fun atmosphere in your restaurant. All right, Luana, thank you very much for coming out today. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to also thank Mary Lou uh, for coming out and talking about money-saving tips. Bajan talking about um, local store marketing and, and really uh, giving to your community. Great ideas and great comments. And the other thing is we'll be seeing you real soon uh, at your restaurants and, and looking at the Mojo and seeing what you're doing for Mojo at your restaurant and uh, keep that Mojo spirit going at your restaurants. Uh, thank you all very much for, uh, for watching the uh, quarterly newsletter and we'll see you at the next one. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye.